Hi everyone. We are in the middle of a record-breaking heat wave here in Southern California. I think yesterday it got up to about 117 degrees. Today it's around 105, but the harvest can't wait. We're going to do a heat wave harvest so the tomatoes, the peppers don't boil in the heat. So come on with me into the shade cloth and let's see what we have going on in here. Now I know we definitely have some golden jubilee tomatoes and I'm using shade cloth to cover them to protect them from the hot weather and you want to use shade cloth in temperatures over 90 degrees and honestly guys i'm a little concerned about this heat wave this is definitely the hottest it's ever been so i'm really hoping that the garden makes it the golden jubilee tomatoes look none worse for the wear oh my goodness this is so much fun i have been waiting for these tomatoes all summer long i actually have covered them with these little mesh net bags here to protect them from the critters we've had some squirrels and some rats nibbling away these are absolutely beautiful. I love yellow tomatoes. They're super, super sweet. We've already harvested a couple off this plant, but these are ready and we are gonna enjoy eating these this week for sure. Now this plant really is taking a beating from the heat. We've got some spider mite damage. I've been trimming that off for a couple of weeks now and it looks like I've got quite a bit more over the next couple of days, but these tomatoes, oh my goodness, these are absolutely gorgeous. There's nothing like harvesting from your own garden grocery store. Homegrown tomatoes are such an incredible treat. And these are very, very sweet and perfectly ripe and ready to harvest. Now you can tell when tomatoes are ready to harvest, number one, of course, when they turn the color that they're supposed to be. And number two, when they're a little bit soft and kind of give a little bit, and you can also harvest them a little bit early if you're concerned about the critters. You can ripen them on a counter or they also ripen really well if you put them in a paper sack. Oh my goodness, those are so incredibly beautiful. A really nice size to these tomatoes. And if the weather cools off a little bit, with a little bit of luck, I may even get some more tomato setting on this plant because we do get warm temperatures into November and sometimes even into December here in Southern California. One of our favorite ways to eat these lately has been just sliced up with a feta, whipped feta dip. And we spread the feta cheese dip over some sourdough bread and then put slice the tomatoes and put them on top. Oh my goodness, you guys, they are so incredibly delicious. So I've already got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tomatoes off this plant. And we've got three more here in this little net bag. I'm telling you, it's a good thing we're getting out here today. We've got a couple more days of hot weather and we don't want these getting overripe. Oh, those are so beautiful. One last one here into the harvest basket we go. Oh, these are so incredibly beautiful. I absolutely love it. Now I want to check on our sugar baby watermelon. If you guys watched our garden tour, you saw how it's growing on this ladder mesh trellis. I know everything's kind of hard to see with the shade cloth, but you know, I wanted to keep it real here and realize that my garden gets hot too, just like your guys's, and sometimes burns up in the heat. So let's check and see if this watermelon is ready to harvest. You can tell watermelon are ready to harvest when the tendril closest to the vine kind of dries up, and I'm sure this one is ready. Look at these tendrils. Oh yeah, look at that. This is definitely ready to harvest. These tendrils are nice and crispy. And this is a small one. Actually, this is the Mini Love watermelon. It's an All America Selections variety. What a cute little baby watermelon. I love these little personal size watermelons because you can eat them all in one sitting and you don't have a lot left over. This is so, so cute. I absolutely love this. How fun to grow watermelon right here in my own backyard. We've got a couple more watermelon on this plant. Now in the heat, the plants get stressed out and really aren't producing much more, but we've got a small one right here. We're gonna leave this on to size up over the next couple of weeks. And we've got a pretty decent size one here at the bottom. And let me just show you the tendril that is closest to the vine is actually still green, which is a sign that the watermelon is not quite ripe. Here's the tendril right here. So we're gonna leave this on for a few more weeks and hopefully we'll be able to harvest it within a few weeks time. Here I have some of the Chef's Choice green tomatoes. These are an absolutely delicious tomato. So beautiful on the inside. And you can tell they sort of have a yellowish cast to them with some green striping. These are definitely ready. They have that nice give to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these 
And you can tell I do have quite a bit of spider mite damage here on the leaves. So unfortunately the heat is really doing this plant in as well. So I definitely wanna take all the harvest that I can at this point in time. So the plants are the least stressed possible and all their energy can go into keeping them alive during this heat wave. So go ahead and pull them out of the, out of the critter bags. This plant has been very productive. We've been harvesting off this for probably a month or so. Whoops, absolutely beautiful tomatoes. And hopefully after our crazy heat wave calms down, things are really gonna take off again and we get another big burst before we get some cooler weather. There's one more in here that's ready. Such a beautiful tomato. Right next to the Chef's Choice Green is one of the large red cherries from the tomato seed collection growing on the ladder mesh. And this plant is really getting taken out by the heat. Lots of spider mites. Spider mites absolutely love the heat. We've had lots of humidity, so we've got lots of bugs as well. So it's kind of a bummer to see this plant going. This plant has actually been growing for over, well over a year. It overwintered and it just kept on giving me some tomatoes. So we're gonna harvest what we can today. And I have a feeling this plant will probably be coming out very soon though, because it's just not looking that good. I think a casualty to the heat wave. Although look at the bottom, we've got some really nice new green growth. But sometimes it's just easier to start over with a new plant. Well, I'm pretty excited. I've got one full harvest basket gonna have to use my second one here for my tiny Tim tomato. Now this plant, oh my goodness, it's really taking a beating from the heat. Looks really bad, you guys. But the good thing is there are a ton of tomatoes on it. But look at all the yellowing. Look at all the dry, crispy leaves. Oh my goodness, such a bummer. And one thing I've been doing to keep my plants hydrated is watering them in these bins of water. And it just soaks up wicks up through the plant and really gets moisture all throughout the soil, gets nice and saturated. But you know what, this tiny Tim tomato is super productive, is absolutely loaded down. So we'll go ahead and harvest all these. These are absolutely delicious tomatoes. We've been making pico de gallo, all kinds of fun things from these little cherry tomatoes. This is such a fun container plant. It only grows to about two feet tall and man, does it pack a punch. It's a determinate tomato, so the plant does produce and then die. So I actually will hopefully get a couple more plants going and get a lot more harvest. These are really fun tomato plants to grow indoors during the winter time too. So if you haven't grown tiny Tims, these are actually in my container garden seed collection. Grab yourself one and get these planted for winter time. Look at all these tomatoes. There are just tons and tons of them on this plant. So we're not gonna be working too hard to save this plant because it's really just in the plant's genetics that it's gonna be moving on after this. I think we're gonna be having a good dinner from our garden grocery store tonight. So let me know if you guys have grown Tiny Tim, what you're harvesting and what you're making from your Tiny Tim tomatoes too. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Nice little basket full. Just planted a brand new round of beans maybe a month or so ago, right down here in this spot. And we just took out some trees overhead, so it's starting to get some more sun. So hopefully we'll get some more harvest as the days progress. These are dwarf Taylor beans. Beans are a great crop to grow in the late summer or even in the fall if you live in a, a warm climate like I do. Literally guys, a month and we're harvesting beans. Aren't these beautiful? It's kind of got a little bit of a color to the pod. And these are delicious on the grill. I love to grill most of my vegetables that we pick. And we just chop these up and throw them right on the grill with the eggplant, with the squash. And they are just so, so tasty. And these are the Royal Burgundy Bush Beans. Aren't those beautiful? Look at the color of those pods. Absolutely gorgeous. Tons of little tiny beans coming on as well. And these plants have actually been in for most of the summer, taken quite a big hit with the spider mites. I've been trimming them back and they're really coming back and producing a second crop for me. So that's always fun. Now this one you can see is past its prime. It's kind of soft and I'll probably just leave this on till the pod dries up and then you can save the seeds inside for next year once it's completely dry. 
Now with beans, the more you harvest, the more they produce. So you wanna, once they start producing, you wanna make sure that you come out every day and check them. And lift your plants up, look underneath, cause they do like to hide kinda underneath there. So let me see if I've got any more. Oh, here's one. Don't wanna miss any. There's a couple down in here. So with beans, you either want to snip them off the plant with scissors, or you can just hold the bean in one hand, the plant in the other, and then just gently pull them off the plant. You don't want to yank them because you don't want to damage the plant. That's the best way to do it. So here we have a nice little handful of beans and a really nice basket of tomatoes. So come on over here. I want to show you some mint I have growing. We absolutely love mint for drinks. It's so, so refreshing. Maybe we'll make some mojitos tonight. And here you want to grow mint in a container. Here I have it growing in a Calicim five gallon smart pots. And I literally, you guys, cut this mint back, completely back maybe 10 days ago, maybe even less than that. And it is growing so, so fast. I think I left this little bunch though. So we're gonna go ahead and trim it. And it just smells amazing out here. I wish you guys could smell it. This mint is so aromatic. And mint actually does really, really well in the heat. Oh, it just smells so good. But I did move all the plants I could under the shade cloth because 117 degrees, if it's not shaded, it's just not gonna make it. But we'll add that to our harvest basket. Then let's move on and see if we have some peppers to harvest. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have quite enough shade cloth to shade this area here. And you can see the zinnias have taken quite a beating. So I'm really hoping that with a little bit of trimming back, they're gonna come back. They usually do pretty well after they get trimmed back. So here's hoping. And the cantaloupe here is pretty toasted. I don't know, you guys. Let me know how your garden is faring in this crazy heat wave too. So down here, I know that we do have some peppers to harvest but the bugs have been crazy in this humidity. We're not used to humidity. We're not used to a lot of bugs. Like a lot, I know a lot of you guys experience in more humid climates, but we do have some, oh gosh, are these the sweet banana? No, I think they're the hot banana peppers actually. The Hungarian hot wax. These are ready to roll. Look at this beautiful color. I think we're gonna be making some salsa, camera guy. I don't know, you might have to steer clear of those. Mm -mm. <laughs> I know you don't like the spicy stuff, but there's quite a few on here. These are so, so pretty, you guys. And the cool thing is there's actually a lot of new growth in here. Look at this green, these green new leaves coming out, which I am really excited about that because you can see there's lots of yellowing at the bottom here from the heat, lots of bug damage. So peppers are so resilient. Once you trim the leaves off, they usually grow back really well as long as you have warm enough temperatures. And look at these flowers here too. So even in the heat, these peppers are doing pretty well. The shade cloth is really helping them out. And peppers can turn different colors on the plant. So here we, at the back of the plant here, let me just harvest this and pull it out. You guys will be able to see it better. We've got a red one. So this one's been on the plant for a while and it's changed colors. So it's probably even that much hotter because it's red. Now let me check out the cucumbers. Oh my gosh, there is a ton of powdery mildew on these cucumbers. It's such a bummer. But we've already gotten a lot of lemon cucumbers off this plant. I love these cucumbers. They're so, so pretty and just so tasty. There's a lot of little cucumbers on here and not growing too much in the heat, but another week or so, if temperatures cool off, we could be getting a pretty good harvest off this plant. We've also got a lot of baby Boston picklings coming on. We lift up the shade cloth so you guys can see. I'm gonna let these size up. I like them to get maybe six, inch six inches or so, and these are gonna be really nice to harvest in a couple of weeks. But look, right here we've got some basil. Now it is getting munched on. Oh my goodness, I think that's the name of the game this summer. The cabbage loopers have been out munching away and I haven't gotten out to spray the neem oil in the heat. So as soon as things cool down, guess what I'm gonna do? Spray organic pest control neem peppermint rosemary. It's going all over my garden. But we're gonna harvest this basil. 
Now basil you want to harvest before it flowers for the best flavor. And you can cut your basil way back and it will produce more for you the more that you trim it. So you really want to harvest it about once a week or so. So you want to cut here below the first or second set of leaves. So it may not be the most beautiful basil in the world. It's got some holes in it, but all you have to do is throw it in a sink full of water, throw some vinegar in it, swish it around really well, let it sit for about 15 minutes to get all the creepy crawlies off and it will be absolutely fine. You can chop it up, throw it in with your roasted veg vegetables, throw it in with your salsa, whatever you want to do, it's going to be delicious. And here we've got some of the large yellow red cherry tomatoes. Now here's a plant that unfortunately has also taken quite a beating from the heat. You can see all the yellowing and spotted leaves. But for the most part, once I get out here and trim all this up after the heat subsides, this plant will put out some new growth. You can see there's still a lot of green on it, still a lot of life left in the plant. So uh, we should still be able to get some more tomatoes to harvest for the next few months off this. You know what, before we check the peppers, let me check our eggplant over here. Wow, the spider mites are going to town under here. What a bummer. There's tons of spider mite damage on this plant. But I know I had an eggplant that was almost ready to harvest a couple of days ago. Oh, wow, this looks so, so pretty. This is called the Hansel variety of eggplant. What a gorgeous, gorgeous eggplant. And you can see how it's really shiny. Nice, shiny, bright purple. That's a sign that an eggplant is ready to harvest when it has that nice sheen to it. I think I might have another one underneath here. Oh, yes, I do. Wow, this is a big one. And this is actually past its prime. Unfortunately, I missed this one. Let me show you guys. I'll pull it out. Can you see how it's a lot duller? Then the smaller one, you really do want to catch them when they're a little bit smaller. It doesn't have that nice, quite shiny purple, but you know what? It's still good for eating. We're going to go ahead and grill this baby up. Eggplant are so, so pretty. I absolutely love it. So let me see if I have anything else under here. I might have some peppers that are ready. I do have a pepper. I don't even know what variety this is, but it sure is pretty. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? I'm pretty sure it's a hot one. These are little Thai chilies right here, and man, these are tiny, but they pack a punch. So I'm gonna pick a few to add to our salsa. I'll make a mild salsa and a hot salsa, just like we did on the harvest video a couple of weeks back. So now let's head over to the other pepper planter. I know I've got a big, beautiful California Wonder Pepper. That I'm so excited to harvest. Under the shade cloth we go. And I really tried to cover everything I could. I never know what I'm going to find when I lift these up on these hot days. But this pepper, oh my goodness, this looks so, so beautiful. What a gorgeous pepper. California Wonder is one of my favorites. Look how big that is. It's absolutely beautiful, in spite of the bug damage on the leaves. I'm going to go ahead and snip it off. Now peppers do tend to get sun scald in really hot weather. This one looks pretty good actually, but I'll show you another one that I think has some sun scald on it on the other side. Look at the size of this. This is so, so beautiful. This would be a perfect stuffed pepper too. It's just so much fun to pick from the garden grocery store. Let me know if you're growing California Wonders. I know a lot of you are growing with a pepper seed collection and let me know what you're making out of it too. I've got two almost full harvest baskets. I got a third here and I'm going to take back the shade cloth because I know I've got some more peppers to harvest. Wow, these are looking absolutely beautiful. Look at these peppers, you guys. Crazy. And oh my goodness, you guys have got to come over here and see this. Just brought the thermometer out here to see what the temperature is. 111. <laughs> You guys, we are out here harvesting at 111 heat. We are both dripping with sweat. It is so hot. And it's actually kind of hazy from the fires that are going on here in Southern California. But I'm so excited to harvest. It's taking the pain away, doling that pain of being out here just a little bit. We've got plenty of water, so we're good. But these peppers here are the Escamillo peppers. Wow, are they beautiful. They are a huge pepper. So, so pretty. And here you can see, again, I'm not yanking the peppers off the plant. I'm just snipping them off. Don't want to damage the plant. 
And here you can see how there's some different color striping on the pepper. So peppers you can really harvest at a variety of stages. I could have left this one on a little bit longer, but I'm so excited to pick it. I've got a couple more on here I'm gonna go ahead and pick. Some that are a little bit too green, I'll leave on the plant. See that one here? This one I am gonna leave on the plant. You see how there's quite a bit more green on here? So we'll leave this on here to just ripen up a little bit more. There's a really nice orange one down in here. I'm gonna snip it and then pull it out so you guys can see it because it's right in the middle of the plant. I don't know if we're getting a good shot of it here. This one is absolutely beautiful. Escamillo is an All-America Selections variety. It's a sweet pepper. It's so, so pretty, beautiful on the grill. We love to get it nice and blackened. It really brings out the sweetness of the pepper. And I can see we've got another one right over here that, oh, this is a giant. <laughs> Jerry, I gotta make sure we get a good shot of this because this is a beauty. And there's one right above it that's still very, very green. This plant has been so productive for me this year. So we're gonna leave the green one, take the orange one, Oh my goodness, this is so, so pretty. I absolutely love these peppers. We've got one more right here for this plant. And we'll still get plenty of peppers off this over the next couple of months. You can already see some new flowers on this plant. Little, see these little flower buds? New green grow, so that's a really good sign that we're gonna get a lot more peppers off this. Now peppers definitely benefit from, from some support. You can see these I'm growing on a little mini tomato cage. Here I've got a ladder trellis. This trellis, a lot of you commented on the garden tour you really liked. It's made by Gardener's Supply. So I'll put a link to that in the video description. But you can see here, peppers get really heavy when they're loaded down. This is another California wonder. What an absolutely gorgeous pepper. But unfortunately, this one did not quite make it into the trellis. So I'll have to tie that up. So just gently lay it down. But I do have a couple more California Wonders. And Jerry, you might want to come around this side so you can get a good shot of this. Okay. This one actually does have some sunscald in it. And man, Jerry, I don't know if I've ever seen you sweat quite so much. It is oh, hot out here. It is. And look at the California Wonders. Here's some sunscald. See how that's a little thinning of the pepper wall there? And it's not a big deal. You can cut it off um, and eat the rest of the pepper but I do like to plant peppers closely together to help shade them and prevent the sun scald. So these ones you can tell are still small. This one, here you guys, this one has a little bit of blossom end rot. So if you see your peppers kind of softening up like that on the end, that's blossom end rot. Now this one here you guys has a little bit of softening up on the end of the pepper. It's called blossom end rot and that's usually caused by uneven watering, although I've had a lot of really good watering here, but just the heat probably just caused this. So you just want to keep your watering as consistent as possible. And thankfully I have lots of other good peppers, so I really don't have to worry too much about that. A plant that has absolutely thrived in the heat is the okra. It loves hot temperatures. And guys, okra is not my favorite vegetable to eat, but we have a ton of okra on this plant, and I'm telling you, I should have picked it a couple of days ago. You've got to check okra every single day, because when it's big like this, it's just too darn stringy. But honestly, I grow it more for the ornamental value than I do for the okra themselves. Look at this okra, it's absolutely crazy. It's so, so pretty. This is red burgundy okra. It's in my spring garden seed collection. And most of these are way too large for eating. If you have anything that you like to do with large okras, let me know. <laughs> Maybe I can figure out something here. There might be a small one on here that might be just about right. Uh, these will probably be ready actually tomorrow. I'll probably leave those on there one more day. Okay, this is probably the most giant one ever on this plant. That is one giant piece of okra. <laughs> Quite a few more on here actually. And the flowers of okra are absolutely gorgeous. There was one open this morning. They're only open in the morning. Here's the bud right there, but they look like some kind of a tropical Hawaiian flower and it's really an absolutely beautiful, beautiful plant. And these okra leaves are getting eaten by something. I think it's probably just cabbage loopers. I've had a really big problem with cabbage loopers. Look at these humongous holes. I haven't seen any grasshoppers, so I kind of doubt that it's grasshoppers. 
Oh, you know what? This okra probably is just about right. I'm gonna give okra another try. We may even throw this one on the barbecue too. It's really best picked when it's just two or three inches long. So let's see what we got under the shade cloth. I think we've got some garden goodies under here. Yes, we do. We have got some eggplant. Spider mites or no spider mites. All these spots on the plants, that's the spider mites going in to destroy the eggplant. But look at here, guys. This is the Ikebon eggplant. What a beautiful, beautiful eggplant. See, it's got that sheen on it. Maybe a tad past its prime, but these are still gonna be perfectly good for eating. And the wonderful thing about covering it all with shade cloth is, there's still some blossoms on here. The shade cloth really protects the blossoms from drying up, which means we're still gonna be getting some more eggplant off this, as long as the spider mites don't take it out first. So these are definitely all gonna get pruned back and fertilized once the heat calms down a bit. And hopefully we'll get a lot more harvest off this plant. So these are some brand new pepper plants that I just put in a couple of weeks ago for a fresh new fall wave of peppers. So they aren't producing quite yet. They've got some smaller peppers on them, but we're gonna let them size up. But here we have our cayenne long slims. Nice hot pepper. And these are holding up pretty well to the heat. We got some, uh, some leaf drop here, but all in all, doing really well. This plant has tons of peppers on it. These are a super hot pepper from the pepper seed collection. We're just gonna take a few. These hold really well on the plant. We're gonna grab a few for our salsa and then cover them back up so they don't fry in the heat. You can also let some peppers dry right on the plant for either to save the seeds from or for some red pepper flakes. So whichever way you want it, the cayenne pepper will come through for you. You guys saw in my garden tour, these were out in the front of the fountain planter to get some more sunshine, but I moved them back here to protect them from the heat. We've got the Hersa go back under here and Chef's Choice Purple. I know we've got some Chef's Choice Purple that the squirrels didn't get that are ready to harvest. Hersa Gobacks though are sizing up really nicely. Let me show you guys. Oh boy, I think we do have some damage in here though. Coming in close, Jerry. Okay. Look at the telltale signs. Mm -hmm. Tomato hornworm of some kind or a worm of some kind, I think got into this bag. Well, this tomato is not any good anymore, but you know what? I think I'll just leave it in there and hopefully the worm will stay, stey put. But the Hersa Govacs are sizing up. Now these are supposed to be giant tomatoes. So we'll see how things go. If the heat doesn't slow them down, they should do really, really well over the next month or so. We may have to start over again with the blossoms. I think a lot of the blossoms just got taken out by the extreme heat, even covered in shade cloth. 117 is just too, too hot. But right next door here, oh my goodness. I think some critters got through these mesh bags. Would you look at this? Something did that. Let's take the bag off. See what's going on here. Either the squirrels or the rats. But these tomatoes are ready to harvest. They look nice and ripe. And I don't think the critters got all the way through because I don't see any chunks taken out of it. I think we might be okay. So the bag, so far so good. I'm really happy with these mesh bags. Really, really pretty tomato, nice and big. Wow. And this plant is just absolutely loaded down. And you can see here how there's some kind of cracking stuff going on here at the top. It's probably just from the heat. This tomato actually probably just kind of got boiled and started to split the skin. And this may not be a chef's choice purple after all. I know I got my tags mixed up. At one time I thought it was an apple tomato. So if you guys have any idea what kind of tomato this might be, let me know. We've got one more on here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it before the critters do. And lots of green ones left on this plant still. Lots of green ones. So we should be harvesting out this one for a couple of months. These are gonna be tasty. Keeping it real here in the garden, guys, this plant is not gonna make it. I'm gonna be pulling this out. But before I do, I've got an Ikebon eggplant to harvest. The spider mites have gotten to this and it's just not doing well in this spot. That plant just does not do well. And sometimes it's just better to start over with a brand new plant. 
pull the plug and get some fresh new vegetables growing. So this one too, this tomato plant too, I'm a little bit doubtful of. This is my other Hersagovac. Wow, this one has taken a beating from the heat. Such a bummer. Lots of dried leaves and definitely gonna be pulling this out. I'm thinking about putting my passion fruit vine here. So let me know what you think about that. Well, even in the heat, it's still fun to harvest three full baskets from the organic garden grocery store. And here we're headed over to where we've been filming the fall garden videos. Thankfully, this is in the shade right now. It'll give us a little bit of relief. And you guys are seeing it like it is here, all covered with shade cloth. Hoping that the little radishes and carrots under here are making it okay. But I know we've got a lot of tomatoes to harvest from the sweet 100 plant. Let's peel back the shade cloth and see how things look. The carrots are actually doing really well. Look at these. It's crazy, even in the heat. And the radishes, they're actually growing in the 112 degree heat. Look here, guys. We just filmed here on Saturday. Hopefully you were able to catch that video. They're actually doing pretty well. I love these yellow sweet Hungarian peppers. These are so, so pretty and super, super tasty. Let's go ahead and pull these off. The plant's definitely taken a beating from the heat. Again, lots of holes, but what gives me hope is seeing all this new growth and the little flowers popping out. So this plant will fully recover. I have no doubt about it. Moving along here, the yellow, or not the yellow, the purple pepper here is actually ripening up, but I think I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer to see if it gets a little bit bigger. That is one cute little pepper, isn't it? Plant's got a lot of holes, but this pepper is still producing. So I'm just gonna to toss this shade cloth up over this plant. This is the Sweet 100 tomato. This has been so productive. The squirrels have been getting this plant as well. So you can see I've got all the mesh bags on, but this plant is just so pretty. It produces the tomatoes on these trusses, which is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these off. These are so beautiful and so tasty. And it's fun to come out here at lunchtime sometimes and just pick a little handful, throw it on top of a salad, or even just eat them plain for snacks. It's a great little snacking tomato plant. Very, very productive. We've harvested a ton of tomatoes off these already. Throw those in my basket and just keep pulling these beautiful tomatoes off. Now it is supposed to cool off into the 90s this week. So hopefully I'll be able to get everything kind of trimmed up, fertilized up, and get it ready to start producing. We're hoping this is our last big heat wave, but you never know here in Southern California, we can have hot weather into October, November. Sometimes we get those late fall heat waves too, even winter heat waves. So let me know if you're in a Southern climate, how the heat's been and how your garden is holding up. Hopefully it's doing okay. This is harvest basket is looking absolutely beautiful. I think I need one of these right now. I think I deserve it, harvesting in the 112 degree heat. Oh, so good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Homegrown flavor just explodes in your mouth. Jerry, you gotta have one. It's gonna help you hold that camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. Isn't that good? Mm-hmm. Thank you. So good. Ready for the big reveal. You guys are not gonna believe what has grown under here in just a week. I showed you on the garden tour a plant that I thought was possibly a cucumber. I had an epiphany today. I'm pretty sure it is a loofah. I think I planted seeds in here last spring. And you guys remember on the garden tour, the plant was about, or the loofah was about this big. It has grown to over a foot long in just a week. So a loofah is a natural kind of sponge that you can actually grow, but you can actually eat these things. But I think I'm just gonna let it grow and see how it looks and use it for a kitchen sponge. So we've got some more actually growing on here as well. Here's one right here. This will be really fun. Make sure you guys subscribe. We'll come back and do some more videos on this loofah plant, but it is growing by leaps and bounds. All the way up to the top of that trellis. Now this is a really fun pepper, you guys. This is the cherry bomb pepper. It's a nice little spicy sweet pepper and super, super ornamental. I love how it looks here on the plant. The color is so, so pretty. Looks really beautiful against the red planters behind it. And with this little yellow tomato cage here, it looks really, really nice. I think that's a cute pepper. Under the shade cloth here, we've got a really nice poblana pepper. This is a nice kind of mildish kind of pepper. 
When these peppers are dried, they're called anchos, but they're really delicious on the grill or to make chili rellenos with. And this is a really nice size. This is a Cherokee purple. And this one is not looking so good. I think we must have got a worm or something in there. So I better take that one off so that worm doesn't do any more damage to the rest of the plant. This plant has quite a bit of heat damage. These leaves are pretty crispy here, you guys. So I'm going to have to do quite a bit of pruning. Ooh, that one just fell right off. And uh, hopefully it will recover, but I think it will. There's still a lot of really good green growth, nice new growth towards the top of the plant. So probably once we trim it up, it's going to be just fine. But we'll definitely be putting this one in the compost pile. I think I might win an ugly tomato contest. If you don't have shade cloth, just use whatever you can around your house. The most important thing is that you shade your plants from that crazy heat. This is an old furniture cover when we bought a new couch that came with it. And I just hung on to it because I know it would come in useful in the garden. I've got my strawberry crate tower double shaded under here. So shade cloth really does do the trick, you guys. 117 degree heat, still producing little tiny flowers. And here's these adorable apple yellow tomatoes. They're shaped like an apple. These are so cute. Hope you guys enjoyed our heat wave harvest. It's so much fun to harvest from the organic garden grocery store, even during a heat wave. Comment below, let me know what you're harvesting in your garden grocery store. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.